that I am thankful for God's love for me. Speaking of of love, men pay attention. It is Valentine's week. Men, it is the week that we celebrate Valentine's. It's Tuesday. Some of y'all still ain't heard me. Hey, guys, Tuesday's the big day, okay? And some of y'all are sitting there right now saying, my goodness, I knew February was coming, and, but it snuck up on me. I'm not pre prepared for that. Some of you men are, are sitting there saying, well, it's okay. I'll do like I always do. And Tuesday night on my way home, I'll, uh, I'll go by Walgreens and there won't, you know, won't be any big decisions to make because there won't be many to choose from. And I know it's true because I've seen some of y'all there because I was doing the same thing. Some of y'all are going to go through there and you're going to be, be looking and there ain't going to be anything. There ain't even a red card left. You, you're going to pick up a little kid's birthday card with, with puppies on the front and you're, you're buying a red highlighter trying to figure out how you can make this into a Valentine's card. Guys, you got a little time. It's Tuesday. Tuesday. But I am um, I'm very thankful for, for Valentine's Day. I'm, I'm thankful for uh, uh, a special day like that that I get to, to celebrate love and get to celebrate uh, uh, my love for my wife, and we have uh, been married. It'll be 24 years uh, this year, and uh, which means we've had a, a bunch of Valentines to to celebrate together. But again, this is a a special time that we celebrate something that we really we really ought to be celebrating each and every day. Now, today's sermon is not just for married folks, but before I move on, those of you who are married here today, celebrate your love for your spouse each and every day. Don't wait around for that that's one day a year. Now, it's great that you recognize your spouse on, on Valentine's, but don't wait around to that, that one day when you have reminders starting for weeks ahead. You even heard about it on Sunday morning. Guys, that's kind of a given. You're going to do something special then. But how about, I keep picking on the guys. This is for the men and the women. We need to be thankful for our spouses and, and thank, thankful that, that God created someone for us. That God created a, a, a partner for us to, to do life with. And for that, we should be thankful. And again, we should celebrate it every single day. As we talk about love today, though, again, I want to talk about more than just the love we celebrate at Valentine's. I want to talk specifically about the love that we should have for God. God's Word says that we ought to love God with everything that we have. And not only should we love God, but that we should love others. And again, we're even going to focus, we, we talked about this scripture, um, I believe it was last Sunday, but it's, it's hard to, to leave such a, uh, an important thing when Jesus said that it was the most important commandment. Matthew 22, 34 through 40 will be our key scripture today. It'll be there up on the screen if you're turning again, Matthew 22, 34 through 40. But when the Pharisees had heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered themselves together. One of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the great and foremost commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. All these two commandments depend the whole law and the prophets. Now, folks, it's not your, your, your pastor standing up here saying this. Jesus said that, that we are commanded to love God, to love God with, with everything that we have. And he also said to, to love our neighbors as ourselves. And again, we could really make a, a, a big difference for kingdom purposes if we just stopped right there, if everybody left out here and said, you know what, I'm going to base the rest of my week on love, on loving God with everything that I have, and on loving my neighbors as I love myself, and we could make a difference. So I pray today, if you don't hear anything else I say the rest of the time, that you've heard that we ought to choose to love. God calls us to love. As a matter of fact, God goes on in his, in his word and shares with us how important love is, that with, without it, nothing else really matters. We're going to look at 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 13, verses 1 through 8. 
1 Corinthians chapter 13, beginning verse 1, it says, If I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but do not have love, I have become a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and know all the mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I have nothing. And if I give all my possessions to feed the poor, and if I surrender my body to be burned, but do not have love, it profits me nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, and is not jealous. Love does not brag and is not arrogant, does not act unbecomingly, it does not seek its own, is not provoked, does not take into account a wrong suffered, does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails, but if there are gifts, but if there are gifts of the prophecy, they will be done away. If they are tongues, they will cease, and if there is knowledge, it will be done away with. Love never fails. Love never fails. In all those situations there, God is showing us that love never fails. That all these other things that, that we choose to do and even, even ways to, to serve the Lord, none of it really means anything if it do, isn't done in love. This morning, again, I pray that as we, we go through this, that, that you see that we should choose to love. 1 Corinthians um, 13, 13 says, But now faith, hope, lo and love abide these three, but the greatest of these is love. Folks, God calls us to choose to love, to love God and to love others. But now we as a, as a society in this day and time, we, we choose to use that word in, in lots of, of different ways. I want to make sure that when I talk about love this morning that I'm not talking about the, the ways that, that we use that word love. A lot of us, well, we love food. Some of you would say, well, I love fried chicken. Some of you would say, I love Mexican food. Some of you would say, I love steak. In the sense that we mean that, there's nothing wrong in that. But that's not the, the kind of love that I would be talking about. Some of us talk about, I, I love Mississippi State or I love Alabama. And that's the kind of love that's like having a really ugly dog. You just love them because you got to. <laughs> there are all different types of, I'm just kidding. All different types of, of love out there. Some of us love our possessions. Man, we can get in trouble with that one. Some of us love our truck, our car, our boat, our, our, our house, our things in it. I mean, that one leads back to the, to the, the love of money and, and money being the, the root of evil and and we can really get in a, a bad way with that one. We use the word love in, um, in a lot of different contexts. We use it today, uh, the word love, in, in, in the context of, of even lust, which is not the same thing. We live in, in a world filled with sexual immorality, and, and we go and, and, and we replace or, or use the word love when, when God meant love in such a, a, a different way, and, but yet we, we use that for so many different things. This morning, I, I hope that, that we understand that, that love is a choice, that we are told by Jesus to, to choose to love God and to choose to love others. And, and again, it's the kind of love that's it's greater than, than an emotion. Colossians 3.14 says, But above all things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. To put on love. What does it mean to, to put on? Well, we're also told in, in God's word in Galatians and in Romans to, to put on Christ. So we're to, to put on Christ, to, to put on love. And, and what that means, it's the same thing as when we chose, when we choose Jesus Christ to be our, our Lord and Savior, we're choosing to put on Jesus. And when we choose to love, then we're, we're putting on love. I, I believe it's just as important each and every day when you get up, I, I hope that you have a, a prayer time, and in that prayer time, I, I hope that you die to self and, and that you're, 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 you're 
giving yourself to God each and every day in a fresh new way, and, and you allow God to, to live through you and the Spirit to, to lead you. Uh, but also in that, and asking God to use you that day, I pray that you would also make a commitment to God each day, and, and through the, the power of his Spirit, that you would also make a commitment to love the way that God loves. To love him and to love others. Again, what if, uh, what if as a church, what if as a church, again, if, if we were all to, to walk out of here today, if we were to go into the workplace tomorrow, think of that person that just really frustrates you sometimes. What if we were to go in and to love them the way that God loves them? We should surrender to, to God each and, and every day to, to love others. God also teaches us through Jesus and the things that Jesus said that, that love is, is something that's not just a word communicated, but love is, is something that's put in action. When we choose to love, it, it leads to action. 1 John 3.18 says, My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. In deed and in truth. Man, some of us can sit around and talk about how we love folks, but we're not willing to, to lift a hand for some of those folks that we say that we, we love. Our, our love is something that, again, we should choose to put in action every day. Not only do we, we choose to to, to love God and to love others, then we should be asking God to, to work through us and empower us to, to love folks the way, that, the way that he loves them. Again, we, we said that it says to, to love the, the Lord with all your, your, your heart, your soul, your mind, with, with everything you got. That's a lot of love. I'm so thankful that God loved us with his most prized possession. See, God loved us enough that he sent his son Jesus for us. That's a lot of love. That God would love us enough that he would send, send Jesus to die on the cross. That Jesus loved us enough that he came down from, from heaven and, and, and gave himself for us. And when you say, how much did Jesus love us? It was, it was this much. Jesus loved us with everything that he had when he laid down his life for us. I just want to hit just a, a couple of a quick things today in, in ways that, that we should choose to love. Now, this first one is, is hard for us. We should choose to love unconditionally. We should choose to love unconditionally. And that's the kind of love that you talk about when you're doing... Um, Weddings, when you're doing pre-wedding councils, uh, I love to uh, always or always make sure that I explain that in, in marriage, you have to love unconditionally. If you're here today and, and you've been married any, any length of time, you probably understand what it means to, to love unconditionally. If you've been married any length of time, you understand that it, it requires in order to stay married, that you love unconditionally. None of us uh, are, are married to a, um, a perfect person. All of us are waiting as we have a relationship with Christ to be, be perfect one day in eternity. But for the married folks here, or for those who, who will be married one day, we're supposed to love unconditionally. And for all of us here today, we're to love others. It says to love others as we love ourselves. I don't know how many of you here, but most of you here are going to do what it takes to take care of yourself. At some point yesterday, today, at some point, all of us took time to stop and breathe. We took time to eat. Thank goodness all of you put on clothes. You're going to take care of yourself. We should be taking care of others. We should be willing to put love into action and love people unconditionally. That love that's talked about in, in wedding vows and stuff is agape love. It's the kind, you've heard that term, it's the, it, just in simple, it's, it's love without conditions. When you go into a marriage, and, and if you go into that marriage and, and, and you're putting down conditions before it even gets started, then you're probably not ready to get married. 
We are called to, to love unconditionally, to love with, without conditions. Romans 15, 7, therefore receive one another just as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Man, I'm so glad that I didn't have to be perfect to get God to love me. Man, if God loved me on, on the fact of, of who I am in, in my traits and in, in my sin, I, know, I would never know the love of God. But God loves us in spite of us. God loves us unconditionally, and that's how we are to, to love other people. Again, therefore receive one another just as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Now, I know there are some folks that are hard to love. Some of y'all looking around need to get a mirror. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> there are people that we're going to encounter in life that are just hard to love. But you know what? God loves them. And he says we're supposed to love them. And in Philippians 4.13, he says we can. Philippians 4.13, he says, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. He didn't say, I can do all things that said love those who are hard to love. No, it says I can do all things. So while you may not be able to love everyone as you love yourself, in Christ, Christ in you can. In God's strength, we are to, to love everyone. Romans 12.10 says, Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor, giving preference to one another. Unconditional love that gives preference to one another. That means that we should be committed to one another without any conditions attached. Folks, that even applies in the church. I'm not just talking about in your house. I'm not just talking about in your, in your marriage. I'm even talking about in the church today. That means you gotta, you gotta love that guy that sat in your seat today. You gotta love that person that parked in your parking space. You gotta love that person that sings off key, and I apologize, it's the best I can do. But God says you're supposed to love me anyway. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love and honor, giving preference to one another. Romans 12, 5, so we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. That one body thing, if we're going to be one body, then in order to stay one body, to stay in, in one accord, then, then we must have that unconditional love. We forget that as, as church folks. See, church folks for, forget that we're supposed, to, we're supposed to love our pastor even if you didn't like today's sermon, you didn't like last week's, or, uh, you didn't like that picture they put on the wall. But folks will find any reason they can sometimes to even get upset with the people that they have the most in common with, with other believers that we're supposed to love unconditionally. The same thing happens in marriage. We, we take the person that, that God has, has paired us with and man, sometimes it just doesn't take a whole lot for us to get frustrated with our spouse. God says for us to love unconditionally. Same thing happens in the, in the church when folks get upset. They'll get upset and they'll run out the door. And they may be the one that was one of the, the biggest supporters ever was of the church. And then they run out the door and they want to tear down and burn up every memory, every memory that there ever was of their relationship with that church. Man, they'll go out and they'll run them in the ground and talk about them and all the things when it wasn't too long ago, a few weeks before that, they was part of all that. Folks, God says we're to love unconditionally. Now, I'm not saying all that because there's any, any problems here. I love our church and I'm so thankful and, and we're so blessed that while sometimes we disagree on things, but you know what, even in spite of that, we love one another unconditionally. And that's a blessing. I mean, anytime you get more than one person in a room and they still love each other and can disagree, that's a, that's a blessing. And again, for that, I'm, I'm thankful. The same thing in, in marriages. Folks can be married for 30 years and have a fallen out and separate. And then they spend the rest of their life running down that, that person whom they were so happy with at one time. You know, I don't know everyone's story. I don't know where you've been or what happened. But at some point, if you were married to that person, at one point you loved them too. Don't continue to, to tear that, that person down. 
You know what, if maybe they're, they're living a way that's inappropriate or, or not right, then, then pray for them. And love them unconditionally. God calls us to love everyone unconditionally. Again, that verse, Romans 12, 10, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor, giving preference to one another. We should love others enough to honor them. Love others enough to, to honor them, and that means to, to hold someone else in high esteem, to hold them above yourself. And some of us, sometimes church folks struggle with that too because we think about ourselves a lot. When we talk about it in, in marriage vows to, to, to honor our spouse, that means to, to hold them in high esteem, to, to put them before ourselves. Folks, we're supposed to do that in our marriage, in our home, in our workplace, in the people that, that we encounter. We should love folks enough to, to honor them. Even, again, that person who's hard to love, you know, they're, they're God's creation, made in God's image. That ought to be enough right there to honor them, to hold them at a, at a high esteem because God uh, made them. You know what, God also, when you look around and that person in the church that, that maybe you struggle with or, or you have problems with, you know what, God said, just like we just read a, a moment ago, that we're all called to be a part of, of one body. And what's going to happen if, if you get upset and you can't stand to be around the, the foot? I'm not a big foot person. I don't like feet, but I know that it's necessary for me to have my feet if I'm going to get anywhere. And if you mess around and run off our feet, then you know what, this church ain't going to get real far. But we ought to love unconditionally and we ought to love enough to to honor folks philippians 2 3 says let nothing be done through self ambition or conceit but in lowliness of mind let each esteem others better than himself folks again it just god makes it very clear that we're to honor one another honor your spouses too Again, it's Valentine's. I want to keep going back to that. Do you know that if you're married, if you believe that you married the person that, that, that God wanted you to marry, then your spouse is a gift that God himself created for you. And in spite of their failures, in spite of their problems, you ought to love them unconditionally. You ought to honor them each and every day, not just on Valentine's. Because God made them for you. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 says, Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in the fact you are doing. You know, at, at, at any time, Jesus could return for the church. And I pray that if Jesus comes back tomorrow, that, that Jesus finds me and that Jesus finds you, not only sharing his word, but encouraging and honoring and, and putting others before us, but in, encouraging others in the members of the body of Christ. Why? Because God said for us to. There are lots of different ways that, that we can do that. You know, sometimes we need to just look for opportunities to go and encourage people and just go and say, you know what? Man, I love you. I appreciate that. Well, that was awesome what you did the other day. When's the last time you took the time to do that? When's the last time you went and encouraged someone else? God calls us to do it. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in the fact that you are doing. God gave us gifts to do that too. First 10, 4, 10, as each one has received a gift, as each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. God has blessed us all with so many different ways that, that we are to uh, encourage one another, to lift each other up. Um, again, that means in the, in the church. Use the things that, that God has given you in your home. Use the things that God has given you in your workplace, in your family, in your neighborhood. Use the things that, that God has, has given you. And again, I, I encourage you today to, to honor your spouse to lift them to a high esteem. 
And I know sometimes, sometimes that's difficult. I'm surprised my wife didn't say amen right there. You know, God, God made us all, all different. And I saw a, uh, a video, some of you, you may have seen it before, but it was a preacher and he was talking about all the, the, um, the differences that men and women have. And, and I'll share just a little bit, but they're, they're so true even at, uh, at my house. Um, uh, he shared a whole bunch. I wish I almost started to just play the video because it was just hilarious. But, you know, we're, God made a spouse for us. And in making that spouse so that, that us as a, as a family unit, that we could con- complete and, and do the task that, that God put before us, so often God makes our, our, our spouse as one who has all the things that, that we don't have. As in they're different. One of the things that this guy said is that... Um, Men and women see things differently. I'm going to go ahead and make some rules. There's no hitting or pointing at your spouse. But men and women see things differently. They said that, that men, we see way far out. We can see way down the road. We're better drivers at, at night while, while women have great peripheral vision. You guys know what I'm talking about? You're driving down the road. You're looking way ahead of you, and your wife's over there screaming and holding the dash that, you know, you just pulled out in front of that car or they're about to hit you. Some of y'all know what that means. They're better at finding things than us. I was so excited this morning because I thought I was going to prove it all wrong because my wife is, is so organized. I mean, everything has its, its place, and, and, and I'm not. We're different in that way. We may get ready to, to be going somewhere, and I'm, I'm like, man, I, I can't find my shoes. As a matter of fact, this morning she said she couldn't find her shoes, and she was coming out of the closet. She only had to go one place to, to look where her shoes should be, and when she came out and said she couldn't find her shoes, I said, well, you let me know if I need to come find them. I'll find them for you. Man, I was hoping that she would come back because I was going to tell y'all, but she knew if they wasn't in there that somebody took them. Kaylee had her shoes. That's the other place her stuff ends up. But if my shoes are, are missing, man, I got to go. I got to like look under my bed. I got to go look under Kaylee's bed. I got to go look in the, in, under the, the kitchen table. And then sometimes I got to go in the garage and, you know, oh, it's still out there in the truck where I changed clothes, you know, when I was gone somewhere. Men and, and women are different. In this visual thing, again, it's just like that. You, uh, you get up in the morning, and again, this is what this guy was saying. You, you get up, and men, maybe some of y'all did this this morning, and you, you go over to the sock drawer, and you're like, honey, where's my black socks? And she said, they're in the drawer. And you're like, no, they're not. And she's like, well, yeah, they're in the drawer. Where are my black socks? They're in the drawer. So, you know, again, the, the wife, she can come in there. She can find it. But men, remember, we said we see things far off, so we got to back over here. You know, and then we're like, oh, there they are. <laughs> we can't see things that are right in front of our face. Man, I'd give anything if Tanya worked closer to me at work because there's times when I literally just want to get on the phone and call and say, can you come up here and and find my car keys for me? Somebody took care of me in that and bought me one of those little things. I can find my my keys with my phone when I uh, lose them, and that's the most awesome thing, but sometimes I lose my phone and my keys, and I'm just in a mess then. And that that seeing things different, too. Uh, You know, we do that. A a man goes to the refrigerator. You know, as a man, we get down in a a catcher's position. We're looking in the refrigerator, and and we kind of look like a bobblehead. You know, we're just kind of bumping all around. You're like, honey, where's the butter? She says, it's right there in the front on the top shelf. Nope, it ain't in there. Yeah, it is. It's on the top shelf. And a woman comes in there, and she stick her head down there, and because that great peripheral vision, she just looks in there for just a second, and she sees every single thing in the refrigerator. And she reaches and grabs it, goes to pull it out, and she says, I told you it was right here. And, of course, we back up over there and say, oh, okay, I see it. Yeah, we can't see the things that are right in front of us. We're different. But God made us different, so together we could become one. One who could be a part of the body of Christ. And again, I pray this morning that you cherish your, your spouse, that you cherish that, that God made uh, a, a gift for you. I am so thankful in, in how this church puts others before their own needs. There's some honoring folks in this church. I'm not going to point anybody out, but as I look around, I see some folks that I've seen honor others in the body of Christ. 1 Corinthians 12, 26 says, if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. If one member is honored, all the members rejoice. I praise God for you. I praise God for the group of people that God has, has brought together here and the things that he's, he's done through you. Last thing today that I want us to see is that 
as we choose to love, that we need to love others enough to freely forgive. And you're going to say that's like the third, fourth week in a row that he's talked about forgiveness. Because that's one that we sometimes forget. We forget about forgiveness. If you're going to truly love someone unconditionally, then you've got to freely give forgiveness. God calls us to do that. Now, forgiving someone doesn't, doesn't mean that, that we're no, no longer going to remember the offense that they, they committed against us. Truly giving out forgiveness means that, that we love them and that we make a choice to no longer remember. It doesn't mean forgetting it. It means we make a choice, because it's hard to forget some things that some people have done. But if we truly love them and we're giving out forgiveness freely, then that means we choose to no longer remember their faults. Folks, we should be doing that each and every day. We should be willing to, to pour out forgiveness. Imagine if God had not poured out forgiveness for us. Imagine if God didn't continue to pour out forgiveness to us daily. I don't know about you, but I fail daily. I get up and, and I can have my prayer time and I can read my Bible and, and I ain't even got down the street good and I done messed up. And praise God, we have a God of, of grace and love who loves us unconditionally and that it's in Christ that, that we're made perfect. It's in our relationship in the shed blood of Jesus that we're made righteous in the eyes of God. We should... Forgive freely, Colossians 3.13, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so also, so you also must do. God forgave you. If you've made Jesus Lord of your life, God forgave you. And the Bible says, just as God forgave you, that you are to forgive others just as freely as he did. Matthew six fifteen. but if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive you your sins. Folks, I believe it's a sin. Based on that right there, I believe it's a sin for us not to freely give forgiveness to others. So this morning, if God puts something on your heart and there's something that, that you need to forgive, maybe you did at one time, but I, I encourage you today that you choose to forgive again and that you choose to forgive each and every day and that through God, through his strength, through all the things that you can do through him, that you give forgiveness so that you truly can love unconditionally. In closing this morning, I, I pray that as you choose to love, maybe you walk out of here today and say, you know, I'm, I'm good with those things you said. I pray that you choose to love enough to tell people about Jesus, to tell people how much... God loves them. To tell people about the Jesus who died on the cross for them. Again, none of us, none of us likes to, to get outside of our, our comfort zone. But I'll tell you, there's something wrong with us when we reach that point that we're no longer willing to tell people about Jesus. In just a minute, we're going we're gonna to baptize Joseph. One of the coolest young men I ever met. I want to tell you something about Joseph. Joseph accepted Christ a couple weeks ago. I mean, that guy's been out telling people. He's been out telling people uh, that Jesus saved him. He's even been telling people, and he's invited people. He got all kind of folks here today to see him get baptized. Now, this is a young man. He don't have all the special training. Some of y'all, he hadn't known the Lord as, as long as some of y'all. I want you to be honest with yourself this morning, honest with God. I bet that young man's probably told more folks about Jesus in the last two weeks than some of us have. We ought to be inspired by that young man. We ought to be willing to love folks enough to tell them about Jesus. I want to tell you about Jesus this morning. If you're here and you've never made Jesus Lord of your life, I'm not asking, have you, you confessed him and said, I know who Jesus is. Have you ever truly made Jesus Lord of your life and asked him to forgive you of your sins? If you haven't, you need to know this morning that God loves you. Jesus loves you. And right there where you are, in spite of you, in spite of all of us, God loves you. Jesus died for you so that you could be forgiven of your sins and you could have a relationship with the Father. 
This morning, I pray that if God is speaking to your heart about anything this morning, that you'll glorify God and love him enough to respond. Would you stand and pray with me?